Hi folks, today we're going to be taking a look at the Rob Evans Moore's Kohansky Tribute Knife. Stay tuned. So those of you who follow my channel will know that I've previously reviewed one of Rob's knives. And in that case it was this one, which is the Bush Tool. I did give it a bit of a rave review, totally justified in my opinion. But Rob is a very good knife maker. And when I saw that he had come up with a new design, I was really interested and keen to check it out and that will be the subject of this video and that one is this knife so rob obviously based the bush tool off this original skookum and that was his inspiration for that design but over the time i think what i can gather he you know refined his ideas of what made a good knife and in doing so he came up with a slightly different design well his own own design really but still incorporated the principles that he had learned from Moors Kohansky. So as I mentioned in my previous video, he did spend some time with Moors and both of these knives were really um, inspired by and derived from Moors Kohansky's teachings. So now in some ways these knives are quite similar and in others they're quite different. The blade shape is very similar, same thickness of stock, which in this case is three mil, but the handle is somewhat different to the bush tool. So the first thing, it doesn't have the base plate or butt plate. It does have a protruding tang, which is very nice. It gives you some additional strength for crushing. So the handle is a little bit shorter on the new design. You can see on this one, there aren't any rivets. They're all um, lanyard tubes for holding the knife and which I guess you could lash to a, a stick very easily. And on this one, there were two lanyard holes, but there were also three rivets. Now the profile of the handle actually does feel somewhat different. It looks quite similar, but there's more of a belly on this one and it does feel more rounded. With this knife, it's, it really is, I don't know how, it's not obvious, but it does feel really nice in the hand. And I think actually nicer than the previous, than the bush tool. It's, it's a very, very nice, comfortable design. Although it's shorter, it's still plenty of room to grip. I really like the protruding tang. That just gives it an extra level of strength and is quite a useful little attribute to this knife. Now, I could, because I had ordered from Rob, I was able to choose the handle material, so I went with a natural micarta with the blue liners. I think they look quite striking. Now, in this case, the steel, it was what he had available at the time, which is why I jumped the queue because the previous person who had ordered this didn't turn up. And this is RWL 34 steel, whereas the previous one was made out of 01. So one thing you can be sure of with Rob's knives, he's definitely designed them with feather sticking in mind. So I've had this knife, I think it's about, it's coming up for eight months now. I got it pretty soon after the other one actually, because I just had an opportunity to get, get it. Um, Rob had a, a gap in his, his list and I managed to get one. And you know, I've, I've actually, found that I've used this one a lot more than the, the bush tool. This is for me a nicer more comfortable knife and I just love everything about it. So I have done a lot of feather sticking with it. Now I do think that these three mil blade stocks are the sort of sweet spot for bushcraft knives. They're designed basically to process wood. Now, if you're looking for a multi-purpose or hunting or survival knife and you want thick blade stocks I don't think the Scandi grind is probably the, the optimum sort of grind style for that sort of activity and then certainly if you're going for those thicker stocks for strength I think different um, blade geometries are better suited but I do think that this 3 mil is, is the sweet spot for this type of knife. So the thin blade stock combined with the Scandinavian grind it really works well in both dry wood for feather sticking and a green wood for making campsite tools and things like that. So it's a really good all-round dimension and size for wood processing. So in the last video, I talked about the quality of the sheath. This is no different, really, really high quality sheath. Now, what was interesting in the last one, I mentioned how well it was wet molded. It was really tight on the, on the knife. This one came so tight, I almost couldn't get the knife out when I first got it, has worn loose but that is remarkable with a leather sheath to have that level of uh, retention. You just, just don't see that. Now, over time, as you oil it, as you use it, it's gonna wear a bit loose, but to start off with, that thing was not coming out. 
So once again, an incredible job with these sheaths. They are top notch bits of kit. Really can't fault them. So I said to Rob when I got the knife that I wasn't going to do a review straight away. I wanted to have a play with it, bit of time with it. So as I say, it's been seven months or so since I got it. I've used it quite a bit actually. I do look after my kit, that's why it doesn't look totally trashed. But you know, I've used this one. This is pretty much the one I pick up when I want to do a bit of feather sticking or whatever I want to do around the camp. This is what I'm going to these days. Now, if you ask me what I don't like about this knife, I can honestly say absolutely nothing. Now, if I was buying hundreds of knives just for review purposes, I'm sure I'd come up with knives I don't like. Now, that is not what I do. I tend to buy knives that I'm really interested in, do my research, and so I tend to end up with knives that I do quite like. And this one is absolutely no exception. Um, really nice bit of kit, it's such high quality. I love the fact that Rob literally is, you know, a couple of hours down the road from where I live, so I can support a lo local business. And when you support a local business and you get quality like that, you know, it's win-win all around. So really happy once again. Now Rob has actually added a third model to his range. It's based on this one, has slightly different geometry on the blade, I believe, but he uses Kydex for the sheath, uh, less options on the handle, and it's designed to be a cheaper alternative. So you can get it without the custom options, but you can pay less for it, and hopefully the waiting list is slightly shorter. So go check out his Instagram, his YouTube, and you'll find more out about it there. So once again, Rob, Thanks for making an amazing bit of kit and all of you out there, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.